continue with this session. We have a series of four uh, country-specific studies which use record linkage mechanisms to estimate completeness. Uh, our first presenter will be from uh, the Chinese GSP system, Professor Zhu Ma, uh, Gang and Xi Yangping. Um, they'll discuss the uh, processes and the assessment of completeness that's used in the disease surveillance point system of China. Okay. okay. I'll say some words. Uh, in our paper, we use uh, two methods to estimate the completeness of a uh, saturated system. One is the capture and the recap. The other is the uh, propensity score method. Uh, this paper is the exploration of the completeness completely to admit uh, so there may be uh, some many many areas need to be improved. So any comments from you are welcome. Uh, and I would like to invite my colleague uh, Dr. Yifeng to give the uh, presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. And good morning, everybody. I'm um, an epidemiologist working in Project Justin in the Division of Factory Registration and Social Science Surveillance in National Center for Disease Control Prevention of China CDC. My background is public health and epidemiology. And it's really great to be here to learn so many things from the demographers, from yesterday's presentations and discussions. And uh, as we all know, China is a huge country with 1.3 billion population from our last census in 2010. And yet, there's no uh, nationwide federal registration system yet. And uh, we have a uh, National Statistics Bureau as a, the official government agency who is responsible for releasing of their uh, total uh, overall overall personality and uh, life expectancy and uh, through the census, obviously. And uh, we CDC uh, systematically collected all the cause of death information through our CD surveillance point as known as the CDC system. So for the um, next uh, 15 minutes or so, I will and show uh, shows our experience with the DFT and the other uh, reporting uh, studies we've been doing to evaluate the convenience of death uh, registration. Uh, so firstly, I would like to uh, spend some time talking about the uh, development of DFT, as I believe some of you or most of you may not know or are not that familiar with DFT. So, um, so the disease surveillance point system was uh, First, the concept of DST was initially uh, brought up in uh, 1978, that's almost uh, 40 years ago. And uh, in 1978, there, was, uh, there are only uh, two pilot counties included in Beijing. And we can see the size of the uh, counties or the districts were uh, gradually expanded from the 1990, 80. And uh, one milestone of DST is in the year 2004. Uh, which uh, included uh, 161 points with full population coverage. 
and in all satellite provinces with uh, 73 million population. And uh, from 2004, the DSP can have a national representative, so we can make uh, the capacity uh, rates of all courses uh, with the national representative. And the another uh, big change of the DSP is in the year 2013, and um, when the uh, size expanded further to include 605 of any point uh, in all the 31 provinces with uh, 300 million population, which is about 25% of the total population in China. And this, uh, from 2013, this system not only has the national representatives, uh, but also has the sub national or provincial uh, representatives. So this is the geographic distribution of DST in, uh, from 2004 when uh, we included uh, 151 sites. And uh, this is the current uh, geographic distribution of the DST, including uh, 605 sites. And we can see uh, in uh, remote uh, provinces like Xinjiang, we have 20 uh, DSTs. And in Tibet, we have also got eight DSTs. So uh, basically, this uh, system can be represented uh, not only nationally, but also uh, provincially. Mm, and uh, one thing I want to point out is that uh, when we say DSP, we uh, refer to the county in rural areas or a district in the city in the urban areas. So either a county or a district. And uh, with the development of the DSP, you can see the goals were really to accelerate the development of uh, complete survival registration and a mortality surveillance system covering the entire population of China and the, some details of the development of the DSP, including the 605 points, uh, was in the paper in published in Publisher Bulletin. And if you are interested, you can uh, go to see the paper. There are some uh, very deep, um, detailed description of how we connect the sites and how this uh, uh, certification was made and uh, what the, uh, the, the future uh, plan of the DSP. And we can see, although we, uh, there are great efforts have been made, in terms of the size and uh, the, the spectrum of the DSP, there is still a long way to go uh, to uh, achieve a uh, complete vital registration system in, in China. And so how does the DSP work, and how do we collect the death uh, in China? So basically, we have different approaches uh, for death in hospital and to death outside of hospital. So this is uh, the workflow for the death, uh, for the detection procedure, for death in hospital. So um, this is quite uh, straightforward. So the doctors will make diagnosis and fill in the death certificate. And then there is a death, uh, designated uh, staff who is responsible to collect the certificate and do the checking and coding and then report to our, our online uh, reporting system. And uh, then the, this part, the CDC part, um, so I want to uh, stop here to just highlight the uh, the importance of the citizen network we have in China because we, the public health system in China is uh, are different from, I would say, from most of the other countries. But, uh, unlike the U.S., we, we only have five CDC with headquarters in uh, Atlanta. We have four level CDCs in China. From uh, the top one is from national level, and then down to provincial level CDC, to uh, city level CDC, to county level CDC. So basically, we have all uh, 3,000 CDCs in each county. In China, and uh, we have over uh, 200,000 uh, CDC co workers or staff working in these uh, different counties. So, um, so when the death cases reported in our system, the CDC, the county level CDC uh, staff will do the rechecking and uh, make the coding of the online code of death and then uh, do some verification and make corrections if needed and do the, some the, uh, statistical analysis. And the uh, county level CDC will report uh, back to the uh, report to the provincial level CDC, and all the data will come to our the server in uh, in, in Beijing in our um, unit. And for the death uh, outside of the hospital, this is uh, actually uh, over 70 percent of the death died uh, actually is outside hospital in China. So this is a quite different uh, appro uh, approach. So the doctors, the village doctors or the community health uh, doctors, or the township uh, health doctors. This might be confusing, but basically it's the health professionals who are dealing with all the patients in the, in the, in the uh, villages, or the township level, or the uh, district level in the cities. So this, these uh, health professionals will collect uh, 
the information to finish the verbal autopsy as part of the death certificate. So they will do that. And then uh, uh, the staff will determine the uh, cause of death and uh, collect this uh, form and do the check-in recording and then do the uh, online reporting. And then local uh, the county level CDC will do the rechecking. And if the witness doctors were not able to do the uh, determination of the online cause of death, then the county level CDC uh, staff will help them to do that part of the job. So this, uh, through this uh, approach, all the data will be reported through our online recording system. And from this table, you can see the uh, death cases reported uh, in China during the past uh, uh, 10, 10 years. So you can see the numbers, the reported number of deaths has been increasing uh, substantially from 2004 to 2015. And in 2004, we only reported uh, 400,000 uh, 400, uh, 400, cases. And now in 2016, the so last year, we have collected uh, almost 6.1 million deaths uh, in, 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 in one year through our system. So in, uh, and the number of counties uh, reporting the uh, death trial system has uh, been uh, 2,900. And uh, for the la third column, well, I'm, I'm using the, the, the term reporting rate instead of the wording coverage because I think that's, that's uh, more appropriate. So you can see 93.6% uh, of counties have reported that to our, uh, our system. And this is the, this is the um, crude mortality rate in GSCs. And this one, this column, is the uh, official mortality rate released by the National Bureau. So we can see there is a, a gap between these two columns. So we can see that there are some other, uh, other reporting issues existing for the uh, DSP system. So that's why we, uh, in our center, we ha actually have uh, uh, been doing the other reporting survey every three years since 2009 for all the 161 DSPs. This uh, survey has been our, uh, like, uh, routine work as part of the uh, cause, uh, cause of death surveillance. And uh, the other reporting survey is uh, in, in an independent sample survey and this was founded by the central government as a package in the uh, regular uh, cause of death surveillance who, uh, and the money will go directly to, uh, from central government to the uh, 161 uh, DSPs. And uh, for each round of the under uh, reporting survey, we'll cover the death occurred during the past three years. So basically, uh, like for example, uh, in the year 2009, we will collect uh, retrospectively the death occurred during 2006 to 2008. And last year, we have the most recent uh, on the reporting survey, which included the death uh, from 2012 to 2014. And uh, the, the uh, survey design, uh, it was conducted in all the DSCs from July to October. And actually, we uh, we organized the training in, uh, in, in May, and then the, the field work was between the July and October. And within each DSP, this is our uh, sampling uh, scheme. So within each DSP, we have three townships in rural areas or streets, or uh, we'll streets in urban areas. The first selected as candidate field. And then uh, from the, these three townships, we uh, finally uh, <coughs> uh, choose one township or street as the field site. If it's, if it's uh, economic level, was similar to the DSP's average, and the population size was increased. <coughs> level on that all the townships or the streets in the DSPs. And uh, if that uh, township or street uh, was uh, chosen as a field, then all the residents in the selected uh, areas were included as the survey population. And so how do we, uh, do we collect the data? So on um, different from the routine uh, surveillance, we first need a uh, them to collect a list of different uh, disease people from the focal time period, and this was created for each resident group, and this is the smallest administrative unit within all the villages or communities in uh, in the selected areas. I recall of the resident group leader, so basically the gentleman or the lady will uh, uh, who are responsible for the for the neighborhood will need to to recall all, all the deaths for the past three years with the help of their well they have some uh, deputies and uh, they need to fill out this uh, form. And the initial list needs to be checked and complemented by data from uh, the other relevant uh, departments, 
including the Public Security Department, Civil Health Department, Family Planning Department, and the Maternal and Child Health Department. And the interviewers in each village or community then will approach to uh, those families which reported a death to verify and revise the relevant information on a death record. And for those uh, who didn't report any death, we can approach to, 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 to the household. And this is uh, the interface of our online um, system. Uh, the, under, the under reporting survey is actually is, uh, is a module in our routine uh, mortality surveillance system. And when on the year of the uh, field survey, we can make that module activated. And this is the interface of the, um, this is the, the county, the street, the nexus. And this is the population. They need to, to fill out the population as the, uh, the denominator. And uh, this one is all the variables we collected. And this is the, mm, the name of the death, the uh, species of person and the gender, the, the age of death, the stage of death, the contact number of the family member, and cause of death and ICD number, and the underlying uh, cause of death, and this national ID number, and the other um, relevant uh, variables, marital status, education level, occupation, place of death, so either in hospital or outside of hospital, and then the diagnostic unit. And, uh, um, and this one was saved. And then there is uh, um, here, there's a button here, so it means that the match, so the system will, will match, uh, go through an automatic match uh, using the following, uh, I think there is, um, Yeah, so basically if a national ID number was matched, then we will consider that this uh, the person, this is uh, the same person. Uh, if the national ID was missing, then cases with the same name, gender, and age within three years were used to, and if, uh, to identify a match. When we use the three years, because I think in Tokyo without a person yesterday, it kind of mentioned that because uh, in Chinese we have people dealing with it, we kind of have a lunar uh, system and again uh, another system, so we make it happen uh, in, within three years. And after an initial computer matching process, then all the mismatched cases were checked and verified by sort of manual checking in the DSP level. So basically, the local people will help us to check whether that's the correct person or not. And uh, so, um, in terms of the training, um, the China CDC will we will organize a standard training for all the provincial level CDCs. And actually, for the last uh, two rounds of online reporting survey, we uh, uh, organized training for the provincial level staff as well as the county level uh, staff. So that's, that's, a, that's a big group of people uh, to basically get up for like three days uh, centralized training. And uh, the provincial CDC will okay organize online training for related staff that comes to all district level CDC. And then uh, the, the third level, the county level uh, or district level CDC will organize training for the interviewers from all the selected townships or streets. So basically the interviewers will include the county or district level CDC staff or the township street uh, uh, community health center doctors, village doctors who are familiar with the routine that course surveillance work. And uh, to make sure that under the phone survey is an independent data selection procedure, so we need uh, the initial list of the three cases, including the in hospital and out of hospital staff from all the resident groups, and uh, the documents from other uh, related departments were also required. And this was emphasized during all the training sessions at all levels. And this is also an important content for uh, supervision because we will, uh, on the year when we do the uh, other reporting surveys, we need to have continuous supervision visits to all the, uh, no, not all the, uh, but some uh, of the sites. And uh, we use, as Professor Joe just mentioned, we use two methods to, to, to uh, analyze the uh, reporting rate. I'll skip with the CMR, CMR because uh, Professor Lau has just uh, made a very clear and thorough presentation on that. And the uh, uh, propensity for weighting method is uh, based on the logistics regression. And this is the detailed uh, method. So basically, the logistic regression uh, to the social dem demographic variables to predict, to predict the probability of respondents was included in the routine surveillance in the sample on the reporting survey side. And this will uh, be uh, include all the related variables like age, uh, gender, 
and uh, the uh, rural urban and the uh, education level, etc. And then we have weighted estimates for the best cases. And this is the uh, this is the uh, formula we use for uh, for calculating the uh, weighting. And then the other reporting rate is the uh, total number of deaths, uh, number of death cases from the. Uh, this is an example from the 2009 to 2011, basically. 2012, uh, here on the reporting survey. And uh, I put this slide because we are asked to, to provide some information on the observation calculation. So we use this, this uh, uh, formula to calculate the, the 95% of this interval. And this is an example of how we uh, do the uh, uncertainty in different uh, subgroups. I thought for this messy uh, slide, it basically shows uh, a comparison of these two different sources. So, uh, so from this table, you can see there are no significant differences between the other reporting survey and the routine mortality uh, surveillance uh, data set. And this is the comparison of the other reporting uh, rate. And this, the first column is the crude uh, other reporting rate. And uh, this one is uh, based on the propensity score method, and this one is uh, by the traditional CMR method. And we can see that our reporting rate is uh, higher, consistently higher in the western areas than central and eastern areas, uh, which is as expected because uh, western uh, region is relatively uh, undeveloped compared to the uh, more developed uh, eastern and central areas in China. And uh, we have a slightly higher uh, our reporting rate in females than males. And uh, obviously, the rural, uh, rural areas have a higher uh, other reporting rate. And uh, as uh, mentioned by the earlier session, the under five age group has the highest other reporting rate. And in our case, it's almost 20% of the, uh, the children under five were under reported. And uh, this trend is uh, actually uh, observed in these two uh, methods. So you can see the total, the, the last row is demonstrates the total, um, the, the overall under-reporting rate uh, from the crude overall rate is uh, 12.6, and the propensity score is, uh, is the same, actually. So this is more or less the, the, the same rate. And I think uh, this is from the summary of the uh, propensity score method. So basically we use the outcome, the under-reporting rate as the outcome measure, and uh, as the as the dependent variable and other related factors as independent variable to build uh, this model, and uh, this method takes account of all the covariance which may affect both the underreporting group and the reporting group, uh, and integrate the information of several major covariance into one potential score variable. And uh, when we use this method, we should include all the variables which potentially related to the have some variables, like for example, in uh, when we do in our when we do our most recent uh, data uh, under under reporting survey in 2015, we found in some provinces we have that uh, missing data which will cause some problems. So, so we really need to uh, make sure that all the uh, uh, variables need to be complete for each individual test cases. And the advantages of potential score. Uh, this is a propensity score uh, weighting represents the influence of multiple covariance and it reduces the dimension of covariance and the calculate under reporting rate of each group based on the individual scores. And in the large sample of cases, individuals between the groups could be adjusted using propensity score, making the distribution of covariance between the groups equivalent to a zero post slide or post uh, randomization. And, uh, the strength of the uh, under under reporting survey is uh, first is the independence of the routine surveillance, and if the sample representation is good and the survey data is is if the quality is high, then it can be used to estimate the uh, under reporting rate in a timely manner and adjust the overall death rate, which is how we uh, do it in, in China right now. And the limitation is obvious that it's always not easy to have very uh, rep a good representative uh, uh, representativeness <laughs> for sample survey and the data quality for large scale survey is not consistently high. Like for example, in the uh, western areas in China, probably the, the, the data quality is not as high as, uh, as that in the uh, eastern part of China. 
And uh, in this investment, uh, obviously, as a manpower, money, and resources, and it's always more easy to administer such a big scale or large scale uh, field uh, uh, investigation. And I think this is my last slide. I want to say that uh, our, our uh, because Professor Joe kind of has a very strong opinion that uh, this kind of, uh, this sort of uh, under reporting survey should not be as, you know, the, a routine uh, method to, to get the under reporting rate. If there are other, like, uh, data sources we can use to make the record linkage, which can be used to replace the, the under reporting survey, because in the real world, we uh, have uh, have uh, a lot of challenges, especially uh, by the local staff, because we need to approach to the family members of the deceased person, and uh, we need them to recall the, the uh, conditions of, of their deceased uh, uh, relative. And sometimes the you know the, the people will get emotional or get angry, and we we do have some occasional conflicts. You know, between the, the, the staff members and the, the, the residents, which, which I think is not, it's really not, not that good thing. So, um, the good news is that uh, from 2013, we kind of have a, a, a new nationwide database. We call it the whole population based information database, which was jointly init uh, initiated by the public health, by the Ministry of Health and Public Security and the uh, uh, Department of Social Affairs which basically collected all the uh, information on death, uh, on death and uh, birth, um, birth and uh, some other related uh, variables. And we actually have uh, tried to, to link this, uh, to, to try to use that big database to link with our DSC site and we kind of get the similar results. I think that's going to stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yun Feng, for this uh, uh, overview of the DSC and describing the propensity score method for estimating under uh, the under reporting and contrasting it with the TMR. I'm sure there must be several questions, but uh, we'll proceed with the next uh, presenter, Dr. Patama from uh, the Ministry of Health in Thailand. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, Institute of Population and Social Research at the University of Hyderabad University. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to the organizer that invited me to have the opportunity to present uh, experience on our study. Uh, I will start with. Well, in terms of my slides, uh, front in PowerPoint is different from here and cannot present in PowerPoint or the size, the space, and to be as fast. Uh, in my presentation, I will present a brief in Thailand in the registration system first and then method that has been used in China, not, not, not from my experience, and then uh, in my experience. And the last one, the lesson learned from those experiences. Uh, so, during this regular system in Thailand, initiated for about uh, uh, centuries ago in 1909. Uh, this is the first law uh, was enacted. And the first law that enforced birth and death registration uh, was passed in 1917. And after that, there are several laws, but uh, all of them uh, were not unified until 1956. The new comprehensive law did cause the civil legislation as the 2499 was enacted and applicable throughout the country. That is the first law that enforced uh, birth death registration throughout the country. 
And after that, then a children of uh, development in the system, and the big development is uh, implemented in 1982 is about the project called the Population Identification Number Project, or 13 digit number of each population in China. Uh, that project took six years to complete like a transfer data of all population in Thailand from database, from housing registration in terms of database to computer base, in the, uh, to computer base. And after that, uh, the revised law called the Real Registration Act BE 2534, and we still use this law, even though uh, there are some device of the law in 2008. And the organization that was responsible to the uh, registration system is the Bureau of Registration and Administration of Order under the Ministry of Interior. So, from the brief of the uh, registration system in Thailand, I, I would like to present like a why we have uh, Thailand, we have the evaluation of under registration. It is because of we we have data in virtual registration system, and also we have population census every ten years. And the like of the model, I, I can say that the model of population census is uh, conducted in uh, 1960. That is the first model. Uh, from the, Population census, and from that census, we have the meeting in China. We have the first population meeting in around in 1963, and the data from two sources. I mean, virtual registration system and uh, population census show some conflict between the growth rate of population that uh, estimate from virtual registration and growth rate from population census. This is the cause of. Uh, the cabinet asked uh, National Statistical Office to do a survey to find out or figure out the, the true rate of population growth in that time. And this is the reason why we have the survey of population change in the first survey in 1954 to 1966 to rule out the, you know, the true rate of population growth and vital rate, uh, birth rate, uh, birth rate, human rate, school death rate. As well. And at that time, and uh, later on, SPC uh, was like a mandate of national statistics. The survey uh, has been conducted every 10 years in the midst of census uh, interval. The first three SPC, like uh, 1964 to 1966, 1974 to 1976, and 1984 to 19. It is three, these three surveys, the methodology used to evaluate, evaluate the completeness of growth and death registration is the dual record system. And the way to match data of birth death records in the SPC, the, the SPC took two years to follow up uh, the sampling, household sampling. Two years and the follow up every three months uh, starts from the baseline, the first round of baseline data, and then follow up every three months. The manner of uh, the machine method at that time is like a user manual machine by using multiple items such as the uh, first name, last name of the baby, or the death, the disease. Death, death of birth, or death of death, death of mutual accident, etc. So these are matching keys that used by manual <laughs> and central state containing method was used to estimate the total number of birth and death as well as the uh, completeness of birth and death in this station. After that, in SPC 1989, 1991, 1995, 1996, 2005 to 2006, the methodology of evaluation versus under registration of completeness is 
change instead of using do all record system, uh, the answers or change the methodology by using only one question or the question and ask whether uh, that birth or death has been registered or not. That's uh, the question. So the direct estimation is from where the birth death events were reported to the register. That's, that's it. And okay, that's it from STG. In Thailand, we also have mixed. But it's not start from the next one. We have the first week in Thailand is mixed K, three, four, five. In each week, uh, the chart or the module of birth with extension were asked in mix. And here we can have the evaluation of complement of birth with extension. Besides direct estimation by using the early course or direct question, we also have like a, a academic research using intellect demographic method to evaluate the completeness of this registration like in 1980, 1980 and human were used like a youth Thailand data and such and very efficient as an example of that method. And again in 2007, uh, DDB SEG and two states, it will be SEG, were applied to 1980, 1990, and 2000, to reassess the registration or incomplete estimation of this registration that found in SKC 1995 to 1986, or the, the, the Duration before age epidemic and after age epidemic. And from the second study, uh, the recommend because of the study showed the different result when compared to the SQC. And the suggestion is that uh, I should have further analysis or rule out or improve the system. So all of them is like a the evaluation at the national level and it, it, the result uh, except in the next start. The result from NSO is like an official, official uh, evaluation of completeness of work and death registration in Paris. Now I will present the experience that at class you are record in the different system. I have three experience. The first one, the experience on a federal record based on to the National Democratic Surveillance System (KDSS). Uh, this surveillance system is a part, uh, is a conduct or operated by Institute for Population and Social Research the University, and it's a part of Index Network. And here is the size of this surveillance. And in the right hand side is the small circle, is the area of the surveillance. It's scattered to the all 13 districts in this province and over 100 villages of the or village in this province. In this study, uh, myself and uh, professor <coughs> use data from the southern system in four because of KDSS conduct a survey so, uh, every year at the mid of Ju at the mid of at July the first the census day is July the first of each year start from 2000 to 2004 that is a uh, five year project. I use data on the first round to the fourth round, data on this record for four years. Use this data matching to the data uh, in the record in the registration system. Because of in, this is like a survey, we, we have only name, first name, last name of people in under the surveillance system. 
we cannot have a certain district number. Even at, at that time, every criteria is going to have a certain district number. So the total number of days in four years around 1,000 kids, the first when we match, we use computer, that only use first name and last name to be a matching team. From the first step, we can match using first and last name, uh, 713 cases. We have 305 cases that cannot match at that first step. We should know that um, in Thai script, there are 44 consonants. 21 vowel style and four tonal marks. That if the name, because of the name is called by the uh, respondent and interview, interviewer has to write out the name by their understanding. This is the name Ari in Thai. You can see in the left and the right, we, we can have two names in Thai. Or the second, uh, Lamai. Lamai can very like this or like that. So this is the same person. Even when written in Thai, you can have the different name. So why we think that the unmatched case in this situation is not because of under-registration. It may be because of the failing name difference between uh, those records in the current system and those records in the base records in the registration. So we ask the process that we do, like that we have the connection with people in the Ministry of Interior, like a personal uh, connection. So we ask them to do matching first by computer. Second, we ask them again to provide the print out as a hard copy of all 16,000 days in that province during the year of follow up sent to us. And we do a manual machine that look at one by one, whether the name uh, close, close to each other or not. And by this manual, we can have more than more every case match and 225 still not match in this second step. In the second step, we ask the person at the Ministry of Interior again to do computer matching. Right now, we ask them to match over all days in Thailand, not only because of the first I ask them to do matching just only days register in that program, not cover the 36 program. In the third step, we ask them to do uh, matching to all. Cover, uh, uh, and cover five years of matching. We can have 97 chairs add into our matching. And finally, we make conclusion. We know that, okay, 128 is not completely match. There may be some cases still uh, register, but we cannot do manual matching for 128. And this one is, we think that this is approximately 12.5% under the inflation from this surveillance system. And from that direct matching, we can have data by sex, by age. That is the first experience. The second, because of, like I said, that STC, the first three STC used to own the cross system. But later on, they changed the methodology to use only one question, whether the disease is registered or not. So, the percentage of under registration or coverage of the registration is increasingly very fast when compared to the previous three STC results. And this result made us think that 
Okay, this is maybe because of the system change. It, it's not because of uh, the develop of a vital registration system or people uh, register that. So we do the study again. Now in this study, I use we used HTC 2005-2006, at that time is the most current HTC. And we can have data. I, I, I want to say that everything that we do is, is like a depend on connection. If we don't have any connection with people in NSO, if we don't have connection with people in Ministry of Public Health or even in Ministry of Interior, we cannot get data because of our study is like an academic research. It's not the routine work. Sometimes it's difficult to ask the data for analyze. So we have a uh, good relationship with NSO and we ask, uh, request the data for SPC 2005 to 2006. And here again, because of this is the first survey of NSO that has 13 digit number. This is the first survey in, in Thailand that has a 13 digit number. I use the, we use only 13 digit number. NSO doesn't go by name of the uh, sample, study sample to us. And this is very special that uh, and it's also why 13 digits. I we use 13 digits as the matching key and as people in Ministry of Public Health, it's not Ministry of Interior. Because of Ministry of Interland, Ministry of Public Health uh, can access vital registration data, I mean uh, birth and death registration because of this organization have to process the vital statistics. So the data from MOI uh, transfer to Ministry of Public Health every month. So Ministry of Public Health has the same data as in Ministry of Interior. Now I ask the responsible people at Ministry of Public Health to do matching for us by using 13 digits. Matching key. We send all data set from SPC just only 13 digits. But anyway, in SPC, we found that around 90% we have complete 13 digit number, 10% have complete, like a missing or less than 13 digit file in 10% in of the record. So only 90% that can use to be matched to the data registration system. And this one uses one step of matching by using 13 digits only. But anyway, when data come back to us, we have data that already merged by Ministry of Public Health. We, we use like a verify by, by address because of not only match or not match, we have the uh, data like a place of death. Uh, place of residence and other related by the one, so we can check from there and we ensure that, okay, the 13 digits is the, uh, can use to be key matching. And this one, the result you can start from the paper in, uh, published in the BHO auditing. From this one, the result of matching show that Eight point seven percent is under the distinction. This different from SPC because of SPC two thousand five two thousand six show just only lower than five percent. I'm sorry. Yeah. The completeness of this distinction from two thousand five two thousand six is around ninety five percent. So our study have higher rate of under registration when compared to the SPC. Okay, so this SPC data can be aggregate by A by six and we also have 95% confidence in the world, but the way that use the 
So, the third experience, but this one is from only my experience, and the data is not public yet, but just only present in Thai population conference two years ago. This one, I try to use the same methodology, but now I change the data source from SDC or the KDSS data to be using uh, the universal coverage scheme data. In Thailand, we have two schemes of health insurance, and this scheme you, you see, you see is, is the biggest health insurance scheme in Thailand that covers 70% of population. So I think that this one is the big data that in this uh, insurance scheme, you can have all information of health, the treatment and the result of the treatment, rather uh, the inpatient because of each hospital have to send the data of in hospital under the UC scheme to the National Health Security Office, which is responsible for this data set. So it means that if any inpatient die, the, the, the report or the treatment, the, the result of treatment is people die. So we can have data of death from the UC system. And also in the UC system, people will have, in the UC, we use 13 digits as identifier of people in the UC. So data from this system can use to match with the uh, vital registration system as well. Again, because of we, we are academic, we don't have data in our own hands. So we have to replace data to this organization. It, it, it's very difficult in Thailand to access data. So I have to uh, send the official letter with the proposal and I got present to a person who, who Three, of the UC system. Okay. So I have to send the official letter and contact with the person like a the assistant of general secretary of that office to tell her that why I want to study uh, from that sort of data. Okay, after she allowed me to use data, I cannot access the data. She, she sent a responsible person to do matching for uh, because of both data, I mean, inpatient data and vital registration data, this organization has moved. So I have to tell the responsible person to do matching for us by using 13 digits. Uh, I have to like a close, sit closely to her for more than three times. The first thing she did uh, and send me back in the lawn matching and I exit near her the whole day to 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 make her understanding what the purpose of machine. So here this is the data that I machine I even get from this one but anyway from this source of data it shows that around ninety five percent this is a Registration of this file in this file, you see, in 
And the data can be escaped by age by sex as well as uh, escaped by region because of the data is uh, very big and also a strict uh, by age by sex uh, of by region as well. So this way as we say that the third study is not overall data. It can be said only in patients or death in hospital, which in Thailand, just only 30% die in hospital, 70% die outside in, at home or anywhere outside hospital. So this is just only one part, and it shows that, okay, 5% 5 under the discussion. If we can hold to the previous study, it shows around 10%. That is the overall under the distinction. It means that 70% 70, 70 of, of death outside hospital, the person completed may be higher than 10% in Thailand. So that, that is that in Thailand we have to further analyze or do research on the completion of death outside hospital. Definitely not cover into the SDC. So the lesson learned from three studies. I, I can say that okay, there are solar factors that affect to the success or the failure of these two studies. We need close collaborative among responsible organizations like the first SDC in Thailand. Three organizations, NSO, NOPH, and MOI. This really close collaborative to collect data, and that is the first and the last collaborative to do uh, evaluate on and then extension of work and data. But after after that, NSO is like a bit of alone to uh, evaluate the company. It need highly cooperated between responsible organizations and researchers like that we do in, in pre experience like that. If we don't have any connection, we, I think that we cannot do all of them. The knowledge and skill of responsible officers should be good enough. If we don't know, we have to train or explain until they understand what we want to do. And the different testing and different means can use to perform cross meeting. I mean that, okay, all of them we used to all record, but the way that we access the data machine, we, we use the different method. And this is of still practical, but requires proper assessment depending on context of any country. And if we have uh, more than two or several sorts of data, parallel study should be done. Okay. So, my recommendation is that if the visual record system is still useful, especially in countries where total source of vital data exists, like in Thailand, you should not overlook this, this uh, method. The cross matching between two or more than two sources, if data available is recommended. And in Thailand, I think that the research on evaluation of completeness of vital information at subnational level, I mean, like a provincial level, should be taken for consideration because of the MOPS develop a system of friendly folder to collect records of individual health as health services at household level. If this system works well or has the regularly updated, the data from the source can be used to do cross matching with the electronic uh, station. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katama, for this uh, comprehensive explanation of the three different uh, matching studies used in Thailand. And I will invite uh, Dr. Eliana to tell us about the experience with recording such validation studies in Brazil. <laughs> Eliana is from the health department. I said about it. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. 
would like to say I'm greatly honored to be taking part of this meeting. And I would like to start with thanks for the invitation. Because of my life of experience in present in English, my nervous also. Please excuse me for reading out this presentation with my Portuguese accent, in which I will cover the use of the linkage of the only one of the health databases in Brazil, in the university, in the service, as well as the lessons learned. Several studies confirm that the large birth information system called the CINAC rates good to excellent in terms of competitiveness and is considered the best health information system in Brazil. The problem of competitiveness, however, persists in some poor regions and the small municipalities where live births are still underreported. It is precisely in the case of the small towns for which estimates are of limited application that data linkage could greatly support health professionals in their qualification of data on these online births. Despite of the low proportion of their missing from the mortality system in the country as a whole, problems with the data collection and flow can still be detected, especially when considering certain disaggregated levels. The quality of information mortality is worse in small towns in the poorer regions of the country for stillbirth and among the more vulnerable population, including women, elderly, the economically deprived, and the afro descendants. This lack of information requires the use of correction factors. In addition to technical limit, limitations in hand to estimate, especially in territorial, in territorial units with small population, these techniques do not allow us to correct the cause of death, for example. The Brazilian Minister of Health has proposed a number of actions to address this issue. Active search of case of death was encouraged, especially in the North and Northeast, where, for religious or cultural reasons, children under one year of age are sometimes illegally buried in backyards. Another important proposal was the creation of the Committee of Child, Perinatal, and Maternal Mortality, which, see, which seeks to tally the actual number of maternal and child deaths so as to reduce them by investigation, investigating death in terms of cause of death and avoidability. The Minister of Health also made the data records in the format of, of, of a tabulated tool called TabNet, freely available on the Internet to anyone seeking to find information on live birth, death, and morbidity. The disclosure of this data by municipality enable, enables users to detect problems at local level and increases accountability in the face of the wider civil society. The incidence and prevalence of communi communicable disease, chronic non-communicable disease, maternal and perinatal condition, as well as violent death among young men are high all over the country, but their relative importance depends on the epidemiological profile on the macro and micro regions considered. Given that, the proportion of ill-defined death is a problem in a reported cause of death in, in, almost, in almost every region. The, the, no, sorry. Given that the proportion of ill-defined death is a problem in reported cause of death in almost every re 
Association, the Federal Council of Medicine and the Ministry of Health have been warning doctors about to need about the need to fill the death declaration completely and reliably. Verbal of doctors are also proposed whenever the cause of death remains ill defined. A decrease ratio in the a decrease in the ratio of ill defined all death has been detected in the last year, especially in the north. The Ministry of Health estimates linkage of data without providing guided regarding the techniques. Local managers at the local level need validate and valid and timely information for treatment surveillance and program action and to evaluate the health service process. This is one of the main reasons why they use multiple sources of data to calculate, for example, the number of life births, deaths, and cause of death using techniques such as capture, recapture, and linkage. Countless linkage projects have been developed at the local level as this one to act based and totally in improved data. The majority of these studies developed at the local level prioritize self-engineering dimensions of quality of information, such as reliability, validity, coverage, and completeness. The majority of linkage projects developed by the municipal health service aimed at improving the data, the quality data, using the feminist linkage of the all or nothing kind. All or nothing means absolute agreement between all, all alphanumeric characters in the key match. The sensitivity and the specificity of the results are rarely evaluated, but the authors show high levels of, of satisfaction with the possibility for improving information, sometimes greatly using a method that is easy and low cost. <coughs> We can say that the most important results of these local level studies are they evaluate the quality of information in each system and propose measures to improve them. They demonstrate that information missing from a system could be recorded in front of another. And while their specificity was high, their sensibility has to be improved especially because of titles and high variability in the feeling of names, especially among more vulnerable populations. Unfortunately, the use of linkage often leads to biased results because of the limited knowledge of methodological issues. Once again, it's important to say, Valid and timely data, timely data are essential tools for planning, monitoring, and evaluating public policies. Some healthcare providers routinely access more than one source to improve the quality of data anyway and make adequate methods of linkage accessible to this personal is an important step for improving the quality of the studies made and consequently of the vital statistics as a whole. Easy and free access to methodological work in Portuguese can contribute to the improvement of information at the local level. Data linkage projects are also developed by university researchers with or, with or without partnerships with managers of public health services. Because of these studies are more often published in pre-reviewed journals than those carried out for local use. They are more re readily accessible and quantifiable, and thus serve as a basis for my review on the experience of record linkage validation studies in Brazil. In the survey conducted in the bibliography database for this meeting, 100 scientific articles whose methodology include data relationships, 
of at least one uh, system were installed. Between 1974 and 2000, mortality data or linked to data for medical records to perform cross-sectional studies. Two deterministic linkages between live birth and mortality databases were made in core of the studies evaluating risk factors for death in the early 1990s. Information on the quality of the linkage is virtually absent. Manual review of death is not mentioned. During this period, the main concern was with the quality of information and medical records were widely used to validate the, the system study. The expansion of the viability of IT and that database explained the increase of number of papers published after 2001. The release of, of the NDG for attention on infant and maternal mortality. As a consequence, there was a significant increase in the number and the spectrum of the studies, scientific studies published after 2000. For example, the studies were related to infant mortality to assess the quality of information on life, birth, and death, as well as risk factors for factors for infant death. Six studies were about maternal mortality and a new correction factor for the under-reporting of death was proposed. Methodological and review studies mainly devote themselves to probabilistic linkage. The period also marks the development and release of a program named Happening, the first software for probabilistic linkage in Brazil, then free and now open source and fully documented in Portuguese. In summary, the use of record linkage has considerably increased in Brazil since 2000. The majority of studies use deterministic linkage with a cross-sectional design and for epidemiological purposes, focusing on the issue of infant mortality. There is little information on the percentage of true pest found and on manual review processes after matching. Publications with methodological purposes and critical evaluations of probabilistic linkage are more abundant and available in Portugal. The possi possibility of using hacklink software without cost boosted the use of the methodology in Brazil. Most work undertaking Brazil using probabilistic linkage follows steps such as standardization, blocking, pairing, decision rules, and manual review. The rules that govern the linkage and accurate measures are more clearly stated in the articles that employ probabilistic relationships than in those that use deterministic linkage. Data linkage proved to be possible desirable, feasible, and useful in Brazil. There is an epidemiological and theoretical plausibility in their results. More widespread recognition of this methodology would certainly improve health surveillance. While low accuracy is often ascribed to the quality of the information contained in the database, there is a relatively little reflection on the linkage percent itself. Proceeding from the new scientist conference to show that the feminist approaches are most common in the management instance of the public health system in Brazil. This appears to be the case because it is an easier method to perform, which doesn't require high performance computers. I believe that official papers on the deterministic linkage methodology could be of great value 
for public health professionals. So they could perform the significant case studies more critically. Adequate use of linkage methodology needs to be disseminated with the health prof health staff, with professional training, inclusion of epidemiology and statistics in the health team and investment in IT, dissemination of appropriate data linkage methodology must be one of the object, objectives in the proposals to create linkage data centers in the future. The use of a sample of links could start to state if determined by manual review could also be used in an attempt to determine a goal standard. Some systems, however, remain understudied in the never distribution of research among the Brazilian region who show the need to establish a systematic assessment of all Brazilian information systems. In order to correct the link, live birth, hospitalization, death data, it is important that all systems are patient centered and that a unique identifier be implemented for linkage portals. The society, public managers, and scientists must discuss the privacy concerns through the link. I hope that by being present here, I can represent the thousands of public servants involved in maintaining the health network in Brazil and whose work is piecemeal, fear, silence, and all the novel loop, but whose dedication is essential for improving the quality of vital statistics in the world. Thank you, Eliana, for this overview of the uh, record linkage studies in Brazil, especially dichotomizing the deterministic studies that were conducted, you know, uh, before 2000, and the shift to probabilistic studies you know, after 2000. We probably might have a few uh, comments about, you know, the wet link software that has been developed and uh, other issues, but uh, we'll do that after the last presentation this session, where we will have uh, Ji Yun Lee from the Australian government. And she's going to be telling us about the Enhancement of Korean Infant Mortality Statistics, Linking Administrative Data and Service. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Jia Li from the Statistics Korea, and my colleague Dr. Wang and Anna I, I am very glad to be here. And they, uh, let me see the first slide. Uh, this slide shows the infant mortality rate of the Korea and Japan since 1998. In 2015, the infant mortality rate of Korea was 2.7 deaths per 1,000 new births. Korea is the one of the top 10 countries with the lowest infant mortality rate among the OECD countries now. However, for the 20 years ago, the observed IMR was much lower than now because of the severe under-reporting of infant death. For the 90 1983 to 1998 period, infant death registration was thought to be only a half of all that completed. Since the 1990s, more attention has been focused on the improving the coverage of infant mortality status and then make them more useful. In this, in this presence, so we first we briefly introduced the civil legislation and vital status sections of Korea. And then next, we directly estimated the completing of birth and death registration. In the following section, we presented the specific methods that Social Korea has utilized to improve the infant mortality statistics by linking administrative data and survey data. Lastly, lastly summary and some using the mass color. Yeah. There are two main registries in Korea, family register and the population register. Family register has a long history in Korea. Now, family register is administered by the Supreme Court. Birth and death, marriage and divorce are legally effective. 
Then they, yeah, they put it into the family that they have the first. And the population registry is the backbone of the Korean registration system. It's administered by Ministry of Interior. It includes, includes residence registration number, place of residence, and research for household members and so on. This is, uh, this would control the CIB system in Korea. The registration of a birth and death is a legal requirement in Korea. When birth or death occurs, parents or families should feel the notification form with the medical certificate in the local registered office within a month. After the local office receives the notification of birth, the certain digit of a personal population registration number is immediately issued. And the vital specific data are based on the family data. Statistics Korea operates the online real time database vital process system throughout all local legislation offices. All vital events have been filed in online family register first, and then this to the information are directly sent to the online vital status system. For statistical purposes only, demographic characters are added in the vital status system. Since the 1970, the birth death medical divorce registry form was the sixth proposed item. We believe this year was the most important step for establishing the current type of the CIVS in the Korea. Rules of vital statistics come up means of, the, of collecting, processing, and disseminating parts of vital statistics across all the generations. Uh, this slide shows the time schedule for the vital statistics dissemination. Provisional vital statistics data are published one month after the registration of vital event. The final birth statistics are published eight months after the year of the year event. And the cause of death statistics are disseminated nine months after the year. It is better. dissemination. Also, this part we are looking at the completeness of a service in Korea. According to the UN principal recommendation, a complete status has been achieved when every vital event has been registered in the system within a specific time period. So, complete minutes of the CRVS can be measured in terms of the late registration and coverage. In this section, we illustrate the level of complete minutes of birth and death registration in the this slide shows the degree of the time and delayed registration of the birth and death with the year of the 2005 as an example. In case of birth registration, 99% of the birth that death occurred in 2005 was actually reported and registered in 2005, while the rest of the 0.9% was reported in the following 10 years. The proportion of the delayed registration is, is is um, even smaller for the death, late registration of, of death for the 2005 explains 0.3% of total death. Although the late registration rate of vital event is uh, quite low, statistically it has key monitor the uh, extent of late registration to ensure that it is the case. Because registration of death is a legal requirement in Korea, and the coverage of death is quite minimal. But estimated coverage of death registry was 99.8% for all deaths in 2015. This figure comes from the dividing the actual number of registered deaths by the total number of deaths in vital statistics. However, greater and infant deaths are reported less accurately than other deaths. Uh, in this part, we are going to closely look at the record linking process to improve the information. Since the late 1990s, more attention has been drawn for improving the coverage of infant mortality statistics and making them more useful. Statistics Korea used the two unique source of the, the data, source of data statistics, complement the routine, routine infant mortality statistics using civil legislative system. One is the premature registration. And so the second one is the infant and maximum mortality supplement recovery. Since the 1990s, Statistics Korea has collected extra information on the infant death from the phenotype. And since the 2000, uh, two, 2009, 
in the Matunabotel to document the survey conducted by Statistics Korea that extended its coverage to the incident of gross quarter death, maternal care, and demographic and sexual perspective. This is the data quality system on infant death. The infant and maternal mortality supplementary survey is a follow death survey of a first class and other medical care providers. Uh, so recorded on the diagnostic case, the crematory registration, and the mother child health registration. As a result of the record linkage between registered infant death and complementary data, IMR increased from the 2.3 deaths per 1,000 birth in 1998 uh, to 4.5 deaths in 1999. After three years of adjustment, IMR has steadily decreased to 2.7 deaths in 2015. This slide shows the results of the record linking for infant death. In 2015, 62% of all infant deaths were registered through the, the routine civil registration system, while 27% comes from the crematory registration, and the rest of the 10% is comes from the supplementary survey and the national forensic investigation institution and so on. Due to the linkage of the death row registration with other registrants in Korea, it was possible to include the coverage of the informal statistics as well as quickly identify the underreported cases in the death registration system. Uh, due to the improvement in the public consciousness and the public health insurance coverage, the proportion of the infant death from the civil registration increased from the 44% in 2005 to 60% in 2015. One of the results of the influence with the infant mortality statistics is the increased uh, completeness of birth registration. Now we have extra information about birth from the infant death statistics. The coverage of birth registration has become more close to 100%. Finally, the part of uh, complex of the infant mortality statistics has become richer due to the infant and maternal mortality supplement survey. Compared to the death registration, the survey provides additional information on infant, mother, and delivery, which will be used in supporting policies related to the mother child uh, uh, supporting team. <coughs> to sum up, Status Korea tried to enhance the infant mortal status, particularly by diversifying the data source of infant death, such as the crematory registration, as well as by implementing the infant and maternal mortality supplementary survey. Quality and combining information from the several data source could improve the coverage of vital status and identify the under cases. Linking the administrative data and survey has contributed to the enhancement of the vital status, such as the infant mortality and the birth status, too. It also brought the richness to the data by addressing the additional information which are not available in the routine civil age. Thank you. So thank you, Jun, for describing the record of specialists in Korea. So, um, measuring infant mortality and uh, I think there's always hope for improvement, right? Not only in uh, improving the quality of data, but also in lowering mortality rates. So, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very uh, illustrative example of, uh, you know, a good public health and clinical practice. Anyway, um, we've got about uh, 25 minutes or so to uh, to uh, wrap up the session. I'll start with a few comments about the four presentations that we had, and then we'll have a more general discussion about everything. So uh, to start with, the, the, uh, the evaluation of the Chinese GSP using the three yearly, you know, uh, completeness surveys that are conducted. Uh, I had actually had the opportunity to review the paper as well that was presented by Yun uh, <coughs> Peng, and uh, it was very useful to understand the uh, two approaches that were used 
in, in measuring the completeness, the propensity score method, as well as the uh, capture marking capture method in that uh, process. Uh, what would be of use is also to understand that um, the sampling design of the under reporting survey you know, uh, is, is something that uh, would have been you know, better explained. It was not very clear, I think, from the uh, paper as well as from the presentation as to uh, how the economic level was used, you know, as a method for stratifying and selecting the sample. You know, for example, um, I mean, how do you determine the economic level of a street, you know, within an urban uh, setting? Uh, I'm sure there may be some, you know, other parameters that are available within the Chinese, you know, uh, uh, information system for making such, you know, selections and decisions. Another important issue was the actual sample that was there in the under-reporting survey in terms of the number of households that were included or the total population that was, you know, covered in the under-reporting survey from where you, you picked out the data. And uh, the third uh, important issue was about the, you know, the issue of independence between the two systems. I think it's important to know whether uh, in preparing the list of events in each of the, you know, selected areas where the under-reporting survey was conducted, were the uh, village doctors or, you know, the local health person who are involved in the routine system, also part of the team that was used to identify the deaths. You know, I do understand that they were employed in doing the verification and going out to the household, which itself, uh, you know, uh, tends to muddy the waters as far as independence is concerned because they were part of the routine system as well. But it's important to know whether they were part of the team that also put together the, you know, the events. And uh, then in that case, you know, how is it that they would report events in one source but not in another is, is, is a question. But on the whole, I think the most uh, encouraging uh, uh, piece of the presentation from the Chinese DSC was the, uh, the, the, the intention to move to the national population database as a source for, you know, conducting the record linkage and measuring the completeness and thereby doing away with the need of having to mount these surveys and then have all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, troublesome questions from, you know, uh, uh, chairman who have nothing better to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's a really encouraging step, you know, having a, a, a robust alternative data source which can be used. And I think uh, that's, that's what we also uh, came to know from uh, Patama's presentation in terms of Thailand also having a population database of what we call the family folder, you know, which would be the preferred, you know, secondary data source to link records from, you know, with the vital registration system, you know, and thereby not having to, you know, uh, rely on the uh, SPC to provide an alternate source or uh, try to, you know, extrapolate from, you know, uh, the under-reporting that is found in, say, uh, HTSS sites like Kanchanaburi and extrapolating that for the whole, you know, country or... <laughs> measuring under-reporting in the hospital dates, you know, from the UHC system, and again, trying to figure out, you know, uh, how to uh, use that information along with other sources to estimate under mortality for the whole country. I mean, there are a few methodological issues in the, uh, in the under-reporting survey as well. Okay, uh, I'd like to know that... Um, when the under-reporting survey in the SPC asks about, you know, uh, whether the death was registered, were the households also asked to show a copy of the certificate? You know, uh, 
because uh, that's that's an important uh, as far as I remember. I think that was part of the uh, uh, question. Yes, yes. Uh, the the wisdom one has to show that it's not all households that can show that that could mean that maybe in Thailand we should know that there are two states of the system, both and this first first and death occur in the hospital. Uh, the reality being we see there is a medical uh document and from this document uh the relative has to bring to this document to the register office to register birth and death one register birth and death I was for birth once birth birth was registered uh automatically it has to be in but sometimes, mm -hmm. either in the, the first SEC, when we do mentioning, they have uh, the expectation to ask about what, why people uh, didn't register <laughs> birth, and they said that, like uh, they documented that they, that they, they have, they understand that if they register this, they should be even though it is just uh, Medical notification or even from if the case man, uh, I don't know how to call it. But if the state outside hospital, the relay case man will issue this document and then it will have to be documented to the person at the office, uh, the distance of So people may understand that this document that they have with the birth or death service, but it's not. So, I mean, uh, those are the uh, uh, critical issues, you know, in uh, understanding uh, to what extent we can use information from the single question or a couple of questions around registration in a survey as, you know, proof for uh, determining whether the death was actually registered or not. Um, I already mentioned, you know, about the, the Brazilian experience where you talked about the, you know, uh, the set of studies, which are actually fascinating to know that so many local level, you know, linkage studies are conducted, you know, on a small scale uh, at the municipality level in the health departments, you know, and they are published, you know, in uh, either government reports or in, you know, in 101 papers in the virtual health library on these studies. It would have been useful to know some of the more technical details, you know, of the linkage and the results of the findings. But nevertheless, the fact that, I mean, uh, they were all deterministic, you know, and uh, mostly manual. And now the shift into the probabilistic, you know, sphere of measuring, uh, I mean, of paper linkage. And uh, if we are able to get some more information about the red link, you know, uh, software and the probabilistic, you know, approach, that is applied and the guidelines, etc., for applying and uh, weighting, you know, the variables which are used in the probabilistic linkage would be useful. And uh, finally, you know, the, uh, the the Korean presentation about uh, the use of, you know, uh, independent surveys and uh, linking the information. Um, so the, the, I did understand from the presentation that, you know, the registration number was an important linking variable. And at some stage, you know, it would be useful to know that for infant deaths, you know, and especially many infants die within a few hours you know, of birth, uh, as to well, how, what's the mechanism for generating a registration number, you know, uh, uh, for uh, you know, a, a live bird that dies, you know, within a few hours, it's a very efficient you know, process, or uh, it's probably all done at the time of you know, registering the infant death itself. But uh, having that variable, you know, even for an infant death, which is uh, or a death that has a registration number you know, at that very early stage, you know, is a very uh, what shall I say, useful and you know, efficient mechanism you know, process. Of administration. So with that, I think uh, I have said what uh, I thought was found. Does anybody have any you know comments or questions to the four presenters? You know, uh, methodological or questions. Uh, thank you for your presentation. 
You mentioned several times a 13-digit number, ID number. The last mention, you said encrypted number. So you would, I will, so again, you have ID numbers, and sometimes in some situations, for some reason, they're encrypted. Could you say in what situations and why? Only in the, the next day, because of I, I cannot do nothing by myself, and I ask the uh, responsible person to do that. Even the responsible person can do nothing. The data that she receives is from the I, IT unit. The IT person encrypts her children and send data to her, and she is a person to do nothing for me. So it had to do with confidence, maintaining confidence. Thank you. Anyone else? There's someone from the Yes. And then also, I think the usually the best policy is, is not a good policy to follow the WHO guideline rules. So we collect the many, many different organizations, such as the National Health Commission, and then we also document the health registration, and then we also work with the military and the, the police information, all the data together. And then we have a qualified code for the qualified code to the code of that code. And then they are looking at the all the information together based on the map pattern. If the map pattern is the right down is the right down is the correct we didn't we borrowed the the diagonal to go to the that but the, the user on the medical that's right write down the test the first day of the death is not a, a very huge more information over the cause of the death in where the, they did follow the government to do it. So in this case, we reviewed all the things together and then we can extend the effort to follow the government. So we did the I suppose for the linking, you use only the underlying code. Yes. For the linkage process, they use only the underlying code. But okay. Yes, let me. Actually, 
a good candidate to become a world uh, leader in uh, life expectancy uh, within uh, perhaps uh, the next uh, seven, eight years. And uh, my question and, uh, uh, about this mm -hmm. is whether but the, the incompleteness of uh, infant uh, death uh, registration and birth registration actually prevents us from incorporating uh, this <coughs> country to the HMD and the HMD. So my question would be, if it is possible uh, using this approach, uh, you know, with the linkage and multiple sources, uh, with additional information, to correct uh, the official uh, data at, uh, uh, at the youngest ages uh, during, say, the, the last uh, decade, uh, and then uh, the, the country can be included in this database. Is it possible? Do you think it's complete enough? Uh, uh, actually, we invented the informal type today. One is the OCTOF IMI, and then the one is the STH IMI. Because of this, uh, uh, after the 2000, it is okay. OCTOF IMI and STH is the same. Okay. But before the, the, the 2000, we have very different scale as the estimated OCTOF. So, in the case of the estimated IMI, it comes from the life cycle. And then we look at the older things to usually neonate their data. The, 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 so more than half of the income there. So we know the different numbers, and then the, we also know that the other uh, related age infants, uh, related age of a child death. We know the all the things get different. So even if we have the under representation of the infant death, we can estimate to the, the infant mortality rate based on the estimated age. So we use the two numbers, and then we actually limit the two point of the Maybe you can use the, uh, also we, nowadays we want, we update it, we are going to update the life table number for the, uh, since the 1970s. Because, of, uh, for a long time ago, we only used the life table for the only five years interval and then the setting, uh, another yearly service to that. Nowadays we estimate the number of people to It's kind of a best production and then we can uh, uh, the uh, 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 I suppose those would be captured under the debt that are being missed by both sources. When they, when they apply the standard then estimate or mission method, they come up with a set of debt that are not being reported in both sources, and those would be representing you know, the debt which you are talking about in the households that didn't report in either source. That's my way of looking at it. But according to my uh, in China, when they have some residential committee committees and that in the urban system and in the village, some residential, they have knowledge about this village or some large group or some large block have some set. So when you the team some bundles come to their village and they will be to the household. But uh, something I hope, hope that, uh, 
Like to say something? Yeah. yeah, I think there's some many concepts that yeah. we are actually thinking that on the public survey, I just, you know, it's, it's like that's gone, data's gone, from there. Right? But the next few days, data question from there, it's different. Yeah, so in, like, for example, in the Eugene data section, uh, the the PC, right? Uh, the, the, you know, you, you get those people who, who die, right? And then for this sample data, we can from the uh, different approach get all the suggested uh, the list of all the deaths and then compare with the same sample population which we obtain from our uh, routine uh, procedures. So in that way, we consider that as the standard in the uh, data you're right. I'm from the same, you know, Yes, Yeah, so I wanted to thank Eliane um, for the sharing of this um, very important experience from Brazil. Uh, I think um, there's obviously a lot of lessons learned here, which um, I think many people and around the world can benefit from this. From the work, a lot, of, a large amount of work done in Brazil, um, in terms specifically in terms of moving from, you know, sort of manual, sort of classical matching methods to protocol sick based methods. And so I was curious whether you could kind of share a little bit more in terms of, you know, like the, the sort of technical and practical move from, you know, deterministic based. Matching to probabilistic um, matching because I think this is, you know, it's it's, it's a non-trivial move, right? And so I'm wondering several things. For example, you know, have we moved you know, to you know a fully automated probabilistic based matching, or is it you know um, semi-automated probabilistic matching? And are you able to use some of the like hand-matched data from the previous years, the previous studies? To train, you know, the the, uh, the matching process in, in current and future studies. And so I'm just sort of wondering a lot about, you know, how you would implement this move, and you know, what some of the what some of the kind of challenges and solutions that you, that you guys developed in moving across. Um, thank you. Um, I don't know if you can call it a movement, a stupid movement. It could happen, it could happen now. If you have a condition to do the probability, you have IT, uh, a good IT equipment, if you have sufficient, if you have Depends. Or uh, if you have a clock level, if you are a clock level, you have to do more simple, simple things. And then I think that we have all of, all of kind of uh, some very very uh, advanced techniques using 
disseminate and someone pervert and soul that are also you at the same time. So we have to have a, a, a more methodological works uh, that you aid people to do. Each one of these kind of Thank you. Yes, Karen. Last question. Okay, great. That's it. Um, about possibility of boundaries around. I think I, I just kind of wanted to, to tag on with it because we've been talking very much about getting getting an answer on completeness. Um, but talking about how all our different methods give us Um, so it, there's actually huge value at the country level depending on why you're doing the assessment, whether it's going to be improved or whether it's um, you know, going to be more specific and correcting that. I, I don't think we should underestimate the value of these methods to try and get us to a, an answer. Um, and I don't think this is a about the other assumption about catchability. Um, um, if, even if they don't get us to yeah, so some attempt to measure completeness is better than doing nothing. Okay, so uh, yeah, with that, uh, I think we can uh, proceed for lunch. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.